back to some breaking news that we were just covering. The DNC voting on a new primary schedule. Let's go ahead and get over to Marissa Parra in Philadelphia. Marissa, what's the latest? Yeah, well, it is official. This was expected to happen. They officially passed this, which means South Carolina will hold the first primary. Now, as we've mentioned, this has been something that there was active dissent from when it comes to DNC members from the states of Iowa and New Hampshire. And that is because, as we've also mentioned, it has been tradition for 50 years. There was the Iowa caucus, followed by roughly 100 years of tradition of the New Hampshire primary, which was the first in the country. And so there is a state law in New Hampshire that requires New Hampshire to be the first state to hold their primary. And now that New Hampshire is Republican controlled in every way, we're talking about governor, house, Senate, state, um, in every way, this means that that state law is not looking like it's going to change anytime soon. And so when we heard this lengthy discussion from DNC members, and most of them were in support of it, but everyone who is dissenting came from those two states, I'm going to read you what one of the biggest critiques was um, this is from one of the New Hampshire DNC members who said that this essentially ties their hands behind their backs and it makes everyone question what's going to happen with the New Hampshire primary moving forward. She said, quote, um, if President Biden doesn't file for New Hampshire ballot, that is contingent on if he does in fact run for reelection. This could provide an opening for an insurgent candidate to rise in the state and potentially win the first presidential primary of 2024. So a big question, a big concern for New Hampshire lawmakers and DNC members is what could this mean for their party in their state? And of course, this is a battleground state. So, Lindsay, big news in a lot of ways, one that was celebrated with a lot of applause from, of course, those members in South Carolina and a lot of other members, Nevada, also celebrating a win today. So I would say that the applause was loudest in support of this. Obviously, this was expected to pass. We knew this was going to happen, but now officially official. But it means a lot is going to change as we look forward and get closer to 2024. Okay, Marissa, stand by for us. I want to go ahead and bring in Gary Grumbach, who's in Washington, D.C., covering the White House today. Gary, how is this likely being received by the administration? So the administration is going to be thrilled by this, right? This is President Biden's real goal was to make this happen, in part because South Carolina was such an important state for him in 2020. It looked like he wasn't going to make it very far in the primaries at all until we hit South Carolina and Jim Clyburn and others really turned it around for him. But it also speaks to what the DNC's priorities are here, right? They're looking for more diverse states. If you look at, at what Iowa and New Hampshire look like versus what South Carolina and Nevada look like, it is significantly more diverse, significantly different types of populations, people that do different types of work in those states. So that's very important. We're now, as you can see from that map there, less than a year away from the beginning of these primaries. But it's also important to, I think, remember here that it's not really going to matter as much in 2024 on a national scale because we do expect President Biden to run again, though he hasn't made it official. We do expect that to happen. The real primary is going to be on the Republican side, and that is still going to have the schedule that we know and love with Iowa and New Hampshire first. 2028 is where it's really going to come down for the Democrats and Republicans to see what this looks like on the Democratic side and how it will change things there. Lindsay. So, Marissa, I know this literally just happened. You're still working on getting reaction here. But can you talk to me a little bit about your reading of the mood right now? I mean, given that, that this is contested here, um, how would you characterize what's going on behind you? I think we can simplify it to joy and applause from everyone except for members from those two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, especially from New Hampshire. There's a lot of concern. But in every other uh, state that we heard speakers from, there was a lot of joy, a lot of celebration when it comes to moving forward. This is seen as ushering in a new chapter for the Democratic Party. And as Gary just mentioned, a lot of the arguments in favor of changing the Democratic order in terms of selecting a nominee for the Democratic Party has been representation, finding states that more uh, accurately represent the demographics of Democratic voters. So there was a lot of applause and celebration from most of the room, except for those representing Iowa and New Hampshire. I'm still a little confused as to New Hampshire having this law and how that's going to work into this. 
Um, and, and that is kind of a confusing thing here. So, so basically what they're saying is that there is the state law and it's not looking like it's going to change anytime soon, which means, because again, they're Republican controlled at the moment. Um, and so what this means is they're going to hold a primary, but it's not DNC sanctioned, if you will. And the unfortunate part here is that it basically renders it useless. As hmm. a colleague said earlier, you can throw a party, but if no one shows up, what good is it, right? So I hmm. think that's the simplest way I can describe it. And we're already getting reaction from some other states. I mean, Marissa, we have Michigan Democrats, Debbie Dingell and the chair of their party, essentially applauding the decision, saying this means Michigan's going to be number five in the nation, number one in the Midwest. So you had mentioned that everybody's upset about this. Everybody's happy about this, except for Iowa, New Hampshire. That includes these other states that essentially are going to be now up in the rankings, like, for lack of a better term. Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, for the most part, I think uh, it, the DNC is trying to put forth this image of unity. And that is proving mm. to be a little difficult right now when it comes to the states that are directly impacted by this change. Um, there was certainly some frustration. And I think if I could characterize it as heartbreak as well from, from some of the DNC members from New Hampshire in particular. But with everyone else, they were saying that they this is a new chapter, this is something to be celebrated, and let's be united here in celebrating this change.